This is a tutorial video showing you one method that you can use to collect data that will allow you to calculate the rate of a chemical reaction. In this video, we will look at how to measure the rate of a reaction that experiences a mass change. The rate of a chemical reaction is its speed, or how quickly it's going. In order to calculate rate, we need two pieces of information. Firstly, we need to know how much reactant is being used up or product is being made. And this could be expressed as a mass in grams, a volume in centimetres cubed, or an amount in moles. And then secondly, we need to know how long this process takes, usually in seconds. Once we have those two pieces of information, we can complete a calculation to work out what the rate of a reaction is. We're now going to look at how you can actually get that data. The law of conservation of mass tells us that no atoms are created or destroyed in a chemical reaction, and that means that the mass of the reactants must be equal to the mass of the products. However, some reactions may appear to change mass, and this happens when one of the reactants or products is a gas. We can use this in order to help us calculate the rate of a reaction. If a chemical reaction produces a gas, and this takes place in an open container that the gas can escape from, then the mass will appear to decrease, because those atoms or molecules that were originally pushing down on the balance are no longer doing so. They've escaped into the atmosphere. We need to write down what the initial mass of the reaction vessel is, and then monitor this over time, and we'll see it decrease. We can use that initial mass and the masses that we've written down throughout the experiment in order to determine the mass change, and this can be used to work out the rate of reaction. In this video, we're going to look at the reaction between hydrochloric acid and marble chips. Marble chips contain a compound called calcium carbonate, and metal carbonates react with acid in order to make a salt, water, and also carbon dioxide gas, which is released. This leads the mass to decrease. You could use this reaction to examine the impact of concentration or surface area on the rate of reaction. Having measured the volume of the acid and the mass of the marble chips that I'm going to add, before starting the chemical reaction, I measure the mass of all of the reactants and all of the equipment that I'm going to use. Here, this is 142.71 grams. The reason that I do this is that when I add the marble chips to the acid, the reading on the balance often fluctuates, and this can make it hard to write down accurately what the mass is at the start of the reaction. I simultaneously start the stop clock and add the marble chips, then plug the neck of the conical flask using some cotton wool, which will prevent any acid from splashing out. Every 15 seconds, I write down the new mass of the reaction. It's important that because I measured the mass of the weighing boat at the start, the mass is still included as we go along, so that's why it's balanced. We're going to be here for a little while, so now we're going to watch this on fast forward. When drawing the results table for my data, there are a couple of things I should bear in mind. Firstly, as with all results tables, the units for time and for mass should only be found in the header of the table. There shouldn't be any units at all in the main body where my data go. In this experiment, it's really important that I know what the change is from the initial mass. So it's important that my table includes a row for the time zero. Now that I have the results table drawn, I can add the mass data that I collected during the experiment. I can use this to work out the mass change. Remember, this is the change from the mass that we started with. So for the first row, the mass change is zero. Since all of my masses are to two decimal places, I'm going to include my mass changes to two decimal places as well. At 15 seconds, the mass change is 0 0.07. That's how much the mass has gone down since the first reading. Each time I'm looking back at the first reading, not the reading directly above. So my mass change for 30 seconds is 0 0.12. It's not 0 0.05. Now that you know this, pause the video and see if you can write down what the remainder of the mass changes will be. Hopefully you managed to write down that at 45 seconds, the mass change is 0 0.16, then 0 0.19, 0 0.21, 0 0.23, 0 0.24, and finally 0 0.25.
Having collected my data and calculated the mass change, I can put these data into a graph, which will make it easier to identify trends. It's still important that I identify the units, and these should be labelled in the axes titles. You may be asked to draw a line of best fit, and this should follow whatever pattern your data show. Here, my data show a smooth curve, so my line of best fit should also be a curve. I'm not drawing a line that goes exactly dot to dot, it generally shows me the pattern of the data, and I can use this to make predictions about points that I haven't actually got data for. So for instance, if I wanted to predict what the mass change would be after 40 seconds, even though I haven't collected that data, I can use my line of best fit to predict that here it would probably have been 0.15 grams. I can also use the graph to work out what the rate of reaction will be either over the course of the whole reaction as an average or at a specific point. If I want to know what the mean rate of reaction is, I need to do the mass change divided by the time, and this is for the whole of the reaction. So here I would do 0.25 grams divided by 120 seconds. This would give me a rate of 0.0021 grams per second. If you're taking the higher tier GCSE exams, then you need to be able to calculate what the rate is at one specific point during that reaction. For instance, we might want to know what is the rate at 65 seconds. The rate of the reaction can be found by finding the gradient of the graph. And so to do this with a curve, we need to draw a tangent. This is a straight line that just touches the curve in one place. And when you're drawing this, it's a good idea to put your ruler on top of the curve because this will allow you to see the curve underneath it and make sure that you're drawing the line accurately. I can now use that tangent to work out what the gradient of the curve is at that point. In the exam, you'd have a lot more lines to look at, so you'd be able to be a bit more accurate than I'm going to be here. But here I'm going to say that the change in mass is 0 0.10 grams from 0 0.15 to 0 0.25. And then the time I'm going to take as 70 seconds because I think that my tangent is pretty much where 30 seconds should be and it's going up to 100. That gives me a rate of 0 0.0014 grams per second. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you found this a useful tutorial for how to measure mass change in a reaction and use this to calculate rate. Don't forget to watch part two where we examine volume changes rather than mass changes. And if you did find this useful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCSE chemistry videos coming soon.